I have been a vegetarian since 2006. And when I first started, people would approach me and be like, where are you going to get your protein? And the nature of their questions was, you know, centered around, could I survive? So in those first few weeks and first few months of being a vegetarian, it was a little difficult, but many, many years later of not eating meat since 2006, I have, um, I've made it. And so I'm going to show you some practical ways to prepare vegetarian meals for anywhere from one week to two weeks. The ingredients you see here are simple ingredients. We got carrots, we have bell peppers, we have squash, we have garlic, and we have a variety of greens. The thing about these bell peppers, tomatoes, and squash is I would soak them in a solution of water and baking soda. That's it. Water and baking soda. There is a YouTube channel called FitTuber that explains why this works so well. These ingredients, I am going to mix them together in a bowl and I'm going to portion them out into gallon Ziploc bags. I could also do quart size Ziploc bags, but gallon sized Ziploc bags are much easier. And so I got all the carrots in a bowl and I'm going to put some more ingredients in that bowl and I'm going to take the bell peppers, the squash, and the tomatoes. Um, I'm going to cut the bell peppers and the squash. I'm going to leave the grape tomatoes as is. I'm not going to cut them up. And the thing is, I'm going to use paper towels to clean the moisture off of these vegetables that I washed prior to putting them in the bags. One of the ways to reduce bacterial growth and I'm not a doctor or medical scientist or biologist, but what I understand is that moisture is the, is the main uh, thing that, and heat that allows bacteria and germs to, to uh, uh, propagate. And so paper towels are key in this process. I also have some leftover red cabbage from the prior two weeks. It had kept very well because of the way I preserve the vegetables in the refrigerator. And I'm going to cut the remainder of it and add it to the mix. And so sometimes I eat these materials raw. The majority of the time I eat them cooked. So while I'm going to have nearly equally sized portioned Ziploc bags with vegetables, I can simply dump those vegetables into a bowl and eat it as a salad or I can dump it into a crock pot and eat it as a slow cooked meal and vice versa. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tuning fork. Now this is optional for those who are not into this, right? But I do believe that certain frequencies enhance not only our bodies, but everything around us. And so, I am new to using tuning forks, but I'm a quick study and a quick learner. And so the technique is simple. And here, this is something that I've uh, come up with myself. When you use the tuning fork on your own body, you can take the end of the tuning fork and you can just put it right on your hand, right on your body, that sort of thing. Here, I add it directly to this pot so that the frequency spreads throughout. That's an intuition I picked up from using singing bowls, right? And so it's the same principle. You have resonance throughout the whole bowl. Well, I've actually played around with this uh, crock pot bowl and noticed that it has similar properties to a singing bowl. And so um, I've placed a tuning fork on this bowl so that I can spread the frequency more consistently throughout all the vegetables that are in that bowl. In the future, I might combine a little bit of water to enhance this technique, but this is the first time that I've done this. And so 
I not only do this uh, with this particular metal bowl, but I am also going to do it with a plastic bowl um, as well. And so I have used a 432 hertz uh, tuning fork, and now I'm using the 528 hertz tuning fork. And the key is to be consistent with it and to take your time. And I can report that using it on a plastic bowl does work as well. And then here's the final result. I have the vegetables in gallon-sized plastic bags. And then I'm going to take the leftovers that didn't fit fully in a bag. I'm going to go ahead and cook those along with some greens as my meal for the evening. And I am pleased with this particular meal prep. And basically, I just pull all the air out of the Ziploc bags. And then I close the Ziploc bags. And I put them in the storage container in the refrigerator closest to the freezer. And it all works.